If you've written React for any amount of time, chances are you've had exactly this experience. You go to render a list of components, but you forget to supply the key. And then suddenly you get this big red warning saying, hey, you gotta make sure that you supply the key to each element within your array. So then you go to the docs, and you also see that the docs tell you that you shouldn't use an index for your key. So now the question becomes, A, why do we actually have to supply a key? And B, why is it not recommended to use an index? So the goal for this video is to cover exactly that question. So let's get into it. So the quick short answer before we actually dive into the code is that it comes down to identity. Essentially, when you're rendering a list of components, React wants to make sure that within this sort of list of elements, it wants to make sure that it knows which each one of these elements are. If you're gonna go ahead and sort of restructure your array, React wants to make sure that it knows which elements are new and which ones were there for the previous render, making sure that it doesn't kind of give you any sort of excessive renders. So as it turns out, the main goal of the key really comes down to identity. So now with that in mind, let's actually dive into a bit of a code example and see this more in action. So here in the code, you can see that I've got a very basic uh, React project. I bootstrapped this project using Create React App, and this is the basic flow. What I've done right over here at the top is I basically created an array called data, which gets initialized to this array here that goes from the numbers one to 10. And then using the map method, I go ahead and I iterate over this particular array, and then I build up this object that has in it two keys. The first key is going to be equal to the value that's going to come from the number n at that sort of iteration within the array as I'm mapping over it. And then the second key is going to be this ID that I'm now making up myself. It's going to simply be the, the word ID concatenated with the actual n number. That's going to sort of serve as my ID for this particular element. So then we move on down into my actual React component, this, function, uh, this functional component called app. You can see that I'm using the use state hook call, I've initialized a variable called numbers, which is going to start out as is, as the uh, data array right over here. So again, this data array that I've just created right out here, that's what my numbers array is gonna get initialized to. Down in my return statement, I'm very simply gonna go ahead and uh, iterate over the numbers array. For each element within my numbers array, I'm gonna go ahead and call the render item function. And then within this render item function, I'm gonna go ahead and return an h1, where I'm gonna go ahead and render the end dot value within the h1. Also, you're going to notice that right now, I'm doing what React recommends that I do not do, and that is to use the index as my key. And then finally, actually, I also have this on click event, which basically says that when I'm gonna go ahead and click on any one of the H1s, we're then gonna go ahead and call the delete item function, passing in the ID of that particular item, which will then go ahead and filter out the items out of my array. I'm then gonna go ahead and call set numbers, which will then force us to see another render. And now we're gonna see the item that we just clicked on will now disappear out of our array. So that's the kind of basic setup. Let's go to the browser and see how this actually works. So as you can see right now in the browser, we do in fact have the H1s getting rendered. We've got the numbers one through 10 all being displayed on screen. Now what I wanna do most importantly is while I'm actually going to be focusing on the numbers directly within the browser itself, I want your eyes to be focused down here inside of my uh, dev tools looking at the element. Okay, essentially what's gonna end up happening is as I make a change, things are gonna change on screen. Those changes are gonna get reflected by a purple flash within the sort of DOM elements, within the sort of uh, developer tools within the DOM elements. You'll see a purple flash that indicates that that particular item has now gone through another paint, another render cycle. Now watch what happens as I click on the number one, essentially telling the code that I wanted to delete the number one out of my array. Watch what happens in my dev tools. So keep your eyes peeled right over there. And now as you can see, just about everything actually flashed purple. Now I'm not gonna explain what just happened just yet. Let's first see how we now go ahead and change this code to the way that React actually recommends we change this code. And now let's see what's gonna actually happen differently. So now we're gonna follow the React recommendation. We're no longer gonna use the index as a key. Instead, we're now going to be using the ID as the key. So let's do that now. Okay, so now the key is equal to end.id. Let's head on back to the browser and see what this changed and how it changed anything. Okay, so once again, we're now back in the browser. Make sure that you're looking at these sort of dev tools. Look at the elements within my dev tools. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the number one. And as I delete it, watch what happens. Now, as you can see, only the div actually flashed, but that was it. We had way, way significantly less flashes than we did previously. So what's actually happening here? And so as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the whole point of the key when it comes to kind of dealing with a list of elements within an array in React, the point of the key is to kind of signal to React that this is the identity of that given element. So the thing is React wants to make sure that it's gonna go through and render your elements on the screen in the most efficient way possible. So something that hasn't previously changed, there's no reason for this item to now go through another render cycle. That would basically just be a wasted render, an excessive render, there's no point in doing it. But of course, React is not going to go ahead and look at your actual data and then based on that determine what has changed and what hasn't changed, because of course your data can become quite complex. Here, I'm only using just some basic numbers, but what happens if I was actually going to use some kind of basic or more complex objects? Like maybe I'm going to be rendering a list of cars or people and there's multiple different keys. Now the actual process of having to scan the data itself to kind of figure out what's different than the last render is going to become a very expensive operation. So all the efficiency the React is kind of trying to give us by making sure that it doesn't have any excessive renders will go out the window by actually scanning the data. So instead, React 
says, I'm not going to scan your data. Instead, for me to know what's new and what's old, I need you to go ahead and give me a key. But make sure your key is a stable key. Make sure that your key will actually sort of stay the same regardless of all the sort of subsequent renders. So now let's think about that because that point that I just now said about the sort of stable key, making sure that it stays the same throughout all the renders, that's actually going to be the crucial point here. See, previously what I actually did was I was using the index as the key. Now, if you think about it, if you're using the index as a key, that means that the index is only going to be true for this sort of current render, right? Basically, if you think about what happens to an array, let's say we have an array of the numbers one through 10. If I delete the number one, what now is going to end up happening is all the other elements within the array are now going to go ahead and shift up one element. One, because now there's a new spot in the array that gets freed. So now everything's going to go ahead and shift up one, which means that the item that was previously at index one is now going to be the item at index zero. The item that was previously at index two will now become the item at index one. Everything is basically going to go ahead and shift up one. So now the problem is since React is not looking at the actual data, but rather it's actually looking at the index to determine whether or not something has to go in fact and re-render. Now all the other items within this array have now become a new item in the eyes of React, even though their data is the same, but since they've now all shifted up another index within the array, thereby getting a new key for the subsequent render, this now signals to React that, hey, this is a new item, and now it's going to go ahead and render it even though nothing actually changed. But on the flip side, if you actually follow React's recommendation and use an ID, so the point of the ID is that it's going to be the same regardless of where the item finds itself within the array. Therefore, even if I actually go ahead and delete the first item within the array, and now technically all the items, all the other items are now going to go ahead and shift up one, thereby changing their index. But since I'm now not using the index as my identity, rather I've got some special ID to kind of signify to React that this is this item regardless of where it is in the array, now React can safely say, oh, I know this is the same item as it was previously, even though it's in a different spot within the array. Well, anyway, that does it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please drop a like. It really helps the channel, and I'll catch you in the next one. Woo!